صلى الله عليه وسلم The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم is what? The Prophet is what? He is political leader now, military leader. So the judge has to be above the political leader. Do you know that? When judge is judging, sorry, there is no politics. One thing we need to know. SubhanAllah, in the West they do this. In the West, in some, some democracies, the judge is above the politicians. That's why he put them in jail. So he asked the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, O Messenger of Allah, would you, would you accept me as the judge, meaning whatever I judge, would you also implement it? He said yes. The Prophet ﷺ said yes. So the Prophet um, Sa'd bin Mu'ad took some time and he said men to be killed, warriors, all of them to be executed, and women and chil children be taken as slaves. They were shocked. Bani Quraida were shocked because they thought he is their friend. You see, he did not look at their friendship. He did not look, you betrayed, that's it. I don't care who you are, even if you are my own father, my own son, my own brother, my own wife. You betrayed, you committed treason. This is it. Habis. Here ends everything. He didn't say, well, they are my friends, or okay, let them go. He could have just said, okay, exile them. Look at me, look at me. I have I had so much history with you. I will just say, okay, exile them. The least. No. 700 men were, were beheaded. Anyone who could fight, anyone who was in the age of fighting, 15 and up, 700. This is one of the most painful things that happened to Bani Israel in Medina. That's why they really hate the word Khaybar. And in Pakistan, India border, uh, Pakistan uh, Afghan border, there is the crossing of Khaybar. They call it Khaybar crossing to remind the Jews that. If you ever commit treason, we will do khaybar to you. So Sa'ad bin Mu'ad is the man who, may Allah be pleased with him, sentenced them. It was them who chose him as judge. Now the Prophet وسلم, had to accept whatever. If, the Prophet, if he said, let them go, the Prophet وسلم, would have let them go. You know what the Prophet told him? وسلم, Jibril came and the Prophet starts smiling. So he asked him, oh, Mr. of Allah, why are you smiling? He said, SubhanAllah, you did exactly as Allah wanted. Allah wanted them to be beheaded and your words came exact. He said, Allah agreed with me? He said, yes. Yes, Sa'ad, congratulations. Allah himself is proud of you. This is Sa'ad bin Mu'ad. Shortly after that, he died with that wound. He was badly wounded. Now, what we learn also from the story of Sa'ad bin Mu'ad radiallahu anhu, dear sisters, is this, that Sa'ad, from his story, we learn that it is permissible to pray while bleeding. If you are bleeding from a wound, not from your period or from your blood coming from your nose. Pay attention to this. If blood comes out of our noses, or from uh, the private part of sisters during their menses. Here you don't pray, you stop. You go until the bleeding stops. If it's bleeding from your nose, then you stop the bleeding, make wudu again and come to pray. If you are bleeding because of your menses, until the menses are over. But if you are wounded, in your body, anywhere. And you started praying and the blood start coming out, even dripping, truck, truck, even running, running. 
Should you stop the prayer? No. You can pray while, so it's not najis. Blood that comes from a wound is not najis. And it does not nullify the wudu nor the salat. Nose, only nose. Nose is not a wound. Okay? Is this clear, inshallah? Sa'ad bin Mu'ad, the Prophet ﷺ made a special tent for him, and he still came to the masjid for jama'ah. SubhanAllah. And some of us very healthy, we don't go to the masjid. The Prophet ﷺ made a special tent, and they, used, they said we used to pray and see the blood of Mu'ad coming towards us, because they used to pray on, on you know, regular ground. until his death, until he lost so much blood, he couldn't recuperate. Because that wound got, uh, I think a camel stepped on him. He was lying down and something happened and opened up again. Yeah. See, Sahaba tested too in their health. Some of us think, these are Sahaba, Sahaba. Do you know what does it mean, Sahaba? Is another, and still they die with sickness, with wound, with, with, with medical uh, issues. For us, we think it's punishment. It's not punishment. COVID, the cancer, it's not punishment. Who told you it's punishment? It's punishment for sinners, but not punishment for men like you and me. Ah, very good. Continue, Sister Hamida. In the narration of Imam Ahmad from Jabir, who said, They, the warriors of Banu Quraida, were 400 men. When the execution was concluded, Sa'ad's artery ripped open again. I continue, Shay? Yeah. His death, Mahmud bin Labid said, When Sa'ad's median arm vein was hit, he became heavy with illness, so he was transferred to the care of a woman called Ufaida to treat the wound. Anytime the Prophet ﷺ passed by, he would say, How do you feel this evening? How do you feel this morning? And Sa'ad bin Mu'ath would respond to him until the night in which he was taken by his people to the quarters of Banu al-Ash'al. The Messenger of Allah ﷺ came and said, They have taken him. Then he went out and we went with him. He walked very fast until the straps of our shoes cut and the companions complained about that to him. The Prophet said, I am just afraid that the angels will get to him before us and bathe him just as they did to Hanzala. When he got to the house, Sa'ad had been washed and his mother was weeping over him saying, Wolf before Um Sa'ad for the loss of Sa'ad. Love has been punctured. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu said, Every weeper is false except Um Sa'ad. Then he went out with his body. The people said to him, We have never carried a corpse lighter upon us to carry than this. He responded to them, Nothing prevents him from being light except that so and so angel but never descended until the day was also carrying him with you. Allahu Akbar. Allah. Uh, Bilal radiallahu anhu narrates, uh, uh, before I go to Bilal, uh, and uh, because he was one of those who carried the uh, Sa'ad bin Mu'ad to the graveyard, uh, he said something very nice. Um, the Prophet Sallallahu used to pass morning and afternoon to visit him and say, how are you today? until one day he felt like he told the Sahaba, the angels may take him away before us this time, wash him before us. And that's exactly what happened. By the time he reached this time, his mom was already weeping and crying and saying that love has been punctured today. Meaning the love to her son has been punctured. She is really mourning, sad, 
losing her son. She said, Ya Rasulullah, I felt like he was washed. He said, yes, the angels already washed him. Now, when they carried him, the Sahaba carried him, they said, we were not carrying anything. He was so light, so light, like just paper. Bilal radiallahu anhu said, it was just like we were carrying baby. So the Prophet sallallahu said, do you know why? They said, Ya Rasulullah, no. I mean, he's heavy, like any one of us. He, he has some weight. He said, he mentioned angels who have never come down to earth, except to carry him to the grave. He said, angels so and so and so and so are carrying him. You are just putting your hands. You were not carrying him. And when they put him in the graveyard, and the Prophet ﷺ cried on him, sisters, look, look what happened. The Prophet was walking ﷺ on his toes in the graveyard. The Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, why are you walking on your toes? He said, there is not a single centimeter on earth in this graveyard, except that there is an angel. I don't want to step on them. He can see angels, they cannot see him. They cannot see them. They said, he, angels, 70,000 angels attended his funeral. Sa'ad bin Mu'ad, remember him. He was sincere, he had ikhlas. He was one of the, the leaders who met the Prophet Sallallahu in Mecca, inviting him to come to Medina before Hijra. And when, when the Prophet Sallallahu moved to Medina, he went and made sure every one of his community becomes Muslim. What is this? By using his position. Today we are using position to do wrong things instead of using to promote Islam and da'wah. That's something you should learn, my sisters. If Allah gives you position, whatever position, all of you have positions with Allah. With people you might not have any position with people, but you have position with Allah. Remember that. So use whatever Allah gave you to promote his deed. If Allah gave you knowledge, use knowledge. If Allah gave you money, use money. If Allah gave you social status, if you are the wife of somebody important, use that, my dear sisters. Use that. Before when? No, before you also lose the position. Like many of our brothers, I keep telling them, now you are CEO of a company, you can hire many Muslims. You know, put the right people in the right positions. You think you're going to be here forever? Then they realize, yeah, Sheikh was telling us. We need actions. Enough talking. It is time now for, we have to be like, yalla, do things. Ramadan is coming. When do we fast Ramadan? When Ramadan comes, not after Ramadan. We start making up. You're healthy. Do something now. You have the money. Give it now. Not when, oh, I wish I have. Like some of you sisters are being caught by age now. So uh, there are many things you do now before next year. Just look, within a year, you will not be able to do certain things. Allah, within one year, let alone 10 years from now. So do, do, do good. Be nice. Huh? May Allah bless you all. Wa alaikum salam. Wa alaikum Shay, why did uh, the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say every beeper is fake, is false, except Um Sa'ad? Why does he say that? Yeah, because the other, the other uh, meaning, meaning Um Sa'ad really, really, Sa'ad is a big loss for his mouth. That's what he meant. He meant Sa'ad really, really, really a big loss for his mouth. Doesn't mean if okay, sis thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't mean other women when they cry, they are not uh, they are not true. But no one can match 
Sa'ad being so good to his mom. Therefore, she is not, it's not fake. That's what it means. Doesn't mean other women are fake when they cry their children, but no one could be very nice to his mom like Sa'ad was. Mm. Meaning it's a big loss for Ummu Sa'ad. For the mother of Sa'ad, it's a real big loss. He was a good man. He was really a good man. You know, some people are there just good. They may not do many things, but they are just good. They don't harm. Or they do a lot in a short period. Six years only. What he did, no leader has done. And 36 years old. He's still young. He could, you know, dunya could... Uh, 36, I can show you 50 uh, be behaving like children. 60, behaving like a teenager. 36, he was behaving like, like he was 80 something. He was beyond the dunya. He was fair to his people. Sisters, he looked after his people. You know, many people don't understand from where respect and love comes. It comes from serving. If you serve people, people will love you. Do you, know, do you know that? You know, sometimes you say, why so-and-so don't love me? Because you do nothing. You just look like, uh, like uh, 12 midnight. You have to be doing things for family. Giving, loving, helping. Your nephew is getting married, you don't help. Your niece is getting married, you don't help. You just want to be invited for you to bring your, uh, your most beautiful bag to show it to your friends. To wear your baju, mlayu, whatever. No, you should help. Anything, any help. You got it? This is how people, by serving people, teach people, people will love you. Give people, people will love you. Feed people, clothe people. Listen to people when they are in distress. Somebody wants to talk. Didn't find anyone to talk to, only you. Sit down, although it's very painful. Sometimes to hear people problem is very painful, I know that. Especially family. But you have to. Things like that. Very good, what else? Sheikh, right. Sheikh, hmm. Sheikh is Sa'ad bin Mu'ad and Mus'ad bin Umar, same, same age, are they, are they peers, are they same group? Almost, yes, yes, excellent. They were almost same age. Yes. And both from, from Medina. What about Sa'ad bin um, Waqas and this Sa'ad? I get confused. Oh, I thought, what, and oh what? very good. No, Sa'ad bin Abi Waqas is the age of group of the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. A little mm -hmm. younger, little younger than the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi but he is from Mac uh, Mecca. Yes. Sa'ad bin Abi Waqqas is one of the 10 Sahaba given glad tidings of paradise. Yeah. Okay. Just a couple of seconds. Wa'iya. Wa'iya. You see, so it's not age. It, it's not age. It's what we do for Allah. We could be very young and do a lot of things for Allah. We could be very old and we do nothing for Allah. Subhanallah. Yeah. Yes. Okay, we take a break now before we head for another Sahabi. We finished Sa'ad bin Mu'ad, right? Yeah, yet, Sheikh. Tana? Okay. No, no, not yet. Not, not yet, yet, Sheikh. How much? A few more pages. A few more pages to go. Okay, then we, take pages. then we take a break. We take a break now. I see you in five minutes, inshallah.
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back, everyone. Wa rahmatullahi wa Okay, we continue, inshallah. Sister Hamida, please continue. Page 254. The Messenger of Allah had visited him. The Messenger of Allah had visited him when his illness got worse, and just before his soul departed, Abdullah bin Shaddad said, Allah's Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam entered upon Sa'ad when his soul was nearing its end, and he said to him, "May Allah reward you with good amongst the leaders of men. You have fulfilled your pact with Allah, and Allah shall fulfill His promise to you." The throne of Allah should be the cause of his death. What virtue is greater than this? What distinction is is greater than this? A slave died on earth and the throne shook in joy and delight because of his arrival. Jabir reported, Jibril came to Allah's messenger وسلم, and said, Who is this servant that died for whom all the gates of the heavens were open and the throne shook? The messenger of Allah وسلم, responded, That is Sa'an. <laughs> Imam al-Dahabi said, the statement of the Prophet ﷺ has been concurrently reported that the throne shook in joy at the death of Sa'an. It is also established from the Prophet ﷺ that he said regarding a robe whose beauty amazed him, the handkerchief of Sa'ad in paradise is far more beautiful than this. Wow. Al-Dahabi also said, the throne is a creature of Allah and he employs it the way he wishes. If he wanted it to shake, it shook by the wish of Allah, and he made it as a symbol of his love for Sa'ad, just, just as Allah made the mountain of Uhud, a symbol of his love for the Prophet Allah says, O you mountains, glory, Allah with him. Sabah, ayat 10. This indeed Masha. is the truth. Hmm. This indeed is the truth. In Sahih al-Bukhari, Ibn Mas'ud, Allah be pleased with him, said, we used to hear the tasbih, glorification of Allah, of food while it was being eaten. The door of this kind of miracle is quite wide and the path to it is deep, iman, that is faith. The angels attend his funeral. Glory be to Allah. The worth of a man is heightened when he recognizes his Lord. The delegates of our Rahman destined at his death, saying, fear not, no grief, but receive the glad tidings of paradise, which you have, which you have been promised. Fusilat ayat 30. Here they are leading the funeral of Sa'ad, and here they are walking all around him in a solemn procession that the pen is incap incapable of describing. Ibn Umar narrated that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, this is a righteous servant for whom the throne shook and for whom the gates of heavens were thrown open, and whose funeral was witnessed by 70,000 angels who had never descended to the earth until that day. Hmm. The squeezing of the earth. The messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Smart. were anybody to be saved from the squeezing of the grave, it would have been Sa'ad. The commentary of Al-Imam Al-Dahabi, he said, this squeezing is not, a uh, is not a punishment of the grave in any way. Rather, it is something that, it, that is experienced by the believer just as he experienced the pain of birth and as he experienced the pain of sickness and the pain of extraction of his soul, the pain of his questioning and examination of the grave and the pain stemming from the effect of the weeping of his family over him after his death, mm. the pain of resurrection from his grave the pain of his standing on the plane of judgment, the pain of his passing over, passing over hell and similar other pains. All of this would be experienced by a servant at a point in his journey of life. Nevertheless, they are neither punishment of the grave nor of the fire of hell. Rather, Allah shows his kindness on his righteous servant in some parts, of, in some parts or all of that. Mm. For the believer, there is no rest <coughs> until he meets his Lord, Allah says, and warn them, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam of the day of grief and regrets. Maryam Ariat 30 also says, 
and warned them, O Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, of the day that is drawing near, that is the day of resurrection, when the hearts will be choking the truth. Al Ghafir ayat 18. We ask Allah for His pardon and His subtle kindness, in spite of the commotion. However, from what is known is that Sa'ad is from the people of paradise, Ameen. and that he is one of the most matthias. Allah, Allahu Akbar. May Allah be pleased with him. Ameen. We ask Allah for his security, and that he should resurrect us in the company of Sa'ad. When Sa'ad bin Mu'adh's soul was taken, his mother screamed, and the Prophet wasallam said, Shouldn't we dry your tears, delight you, and take away your grief? Certainly, your son is the first person Allah smiled at the throne shook for his sake. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. He said that instead of crying, my sister, you should be smiling because your son is the first one Allah will smile at and the, 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 the throne of Allah shook because of his death. So you should be proud because mother, you know, emotional. Uh, and Sa'ad was very good to his mother. SubhanAllah, even when he was kafir, even before he was, it's, it's in nobility. That's why I, I, I tell people, being nice to the mother, it's not just a character of Islam. It's a character of a true man. You know, man, a man, he's not a man if he's not nice to his mom or his wife or his daughter or his sister. So, it's, it's, it's a character of nobility, it has nothing to do with just Islam. Islam, of course, will improve that. So, Sa'ad radiallahu anhu, uh, 70,000 angels attended his funeral. They have never come to earth. First time, Allah commanded them to go. Go attend the funeral. They have never been on earth. That shows you that they don't have free will, unlike you and me. Today we are in uh, Malaysia, tomorrow we are in Algeria. Today we are in Singapore, tomorrow we are in London. Today we are in London, day after tomorrow in Paris. Today we are in, uh, in Kuala Slangor, tomorrow we are in uh, Kuching. Hold on please, just a second. Yes, my dear sisters. So, you see, do you see how nice to talk about the Sahaba, but also painful? Because do we have men like them nowadays? Do you see why the Prophet Sallallahu could, why Allah made him successful in his da'wah? He had real men and women around him. Men and women around the Prophet. 
صلى الله عليه وسلم. And Allah mentioned that in the Quran many times that oh Muhammad, you need to understand one thing, صلى الله عليه وسلم. Allah was telling him that unlike many other prophets before you, we supported you with the best of the best. Starting with Khadija, may Allah be pleased with her. Allah mentioned that because he gave him the example of the two women who were evil. The wife of Nuh alayhi salam and the wife of Lut alayhi salam. That, oh Muhammad, look, you don't have, I could have tested you in your family. Like I tested your brother Nuh and your brother Lut alayhi salam. Peace be upon them. You got it? You, you see the point where it is? Oh Muhammad, we have given you a good uncle, although he was not a Muslim. Abu Talib, we could have tested you with a father like Ibrahim alayhi salam. Oh Muhammad, we could have given you a hard time like the people of Nuh, like the people of Thamud, like the people of Ad. Your Sahaba are great man. Your Sahaba women are great women. So Allah Azza wa was telling him indirectly that I have given you the best of the best to support you. One of them is Sa'ad bin Mu'ad, radiyallahu anhu. So there are so many pains we go through in life. One of them is the pain of death. And the pain, sisters, of people crying on us. We should, you should tell people when we die, don't wail, crying, just tears, normal. But Ma, Dad, what's going to happen to me without you? Ya Allah, why this? Why? Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. And that brings pain to the dead. Imagine Sheikh Zubair is dead now and people are crying on me. That will hurt me. This is why you shouldn't be wailing, weeping, crying, making noise. To cry, you know, tears coming down, it's normal. It's very normal. But ma, dad, what will happen to you? Sayang, what will happen to me after you? You'll be okay without me. Like bear. Life will continue. Sheikh, if you die and leave us, who will teach us? Who will teach you? Huh. Life will continue because Allah never dies. Remember that. Yeah? Okay. Any question? General, general, also about Sa'ad bin Mu'ad or about anything? Buying, selling, uh, family, Salatul Rahim, Rajab, uh, Sha'ban, Ramadan coming. Some of you didn't pay their dues yet or still paying. Some of you, long time ago, you missed your fasting when you thought you were smarter than uh, Marlene Monroe. Takbir. Shay, we, Shay, we, we finish off the last bit, Shay, before. Answering the question, is that okay? Just we didn't finish. More. No, not yet. One more paragraph. Okay, go ahead. The weeping of the companions for him. When the wound of Sa'ad burst open again, Allah's Messenger وسلم, rushed to him and helped him to his chest while blood flowed on him. Then Umar came in and uttered the Tarji, Inna lillahi wa inna ilahi rajiun. To Allah we belong and to him is our return. Aisha also reported Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came to visit Sa'ad along with Abu Bakr and Umar in the tent which Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam pitched for him in the masjid. At that time, Sa'ad was in the throes of death. But the one in whose hand is the soul of Muhammad, I said to myself, today I'm going to distinguish between the crying of Abu Bakr from that of Umar. And all this while I was in my apartment both of them were, as Allah described them, merciful among themselves. al fat ayat 29. Sa'ad died at the age of 37, and Allah's Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, led his janazah, and he was buried at the bucket. 
mashallah. Uh, usually, usually Omar, Omar uh, can hold. Look at me, Omar strong, strong, very strong. He, he has that personality. So he can, he can hold his cry. He cries, you can see tears, but you don't hear his voice. While Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu, if he cries, he makes noise. <laughs> Aisha said, that day I could hear who is Abu Bakr, who is Omar. Both of them, they couldn't because he's a good man, I told you. The Prophet himself prayed Salat al-Janazah on him. You know what does it mean, the Prophet Imam, Salat al-Janazah? Allahu Akbar. And then they took him to Baqi' and buried him. Baqi' near where all the Sahaba are buried. The super majority of Sahaba buried in Baqi'. Yes, my dear sisters. That's the story of Sa'd. Bin Mu'adh. We have Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas. We have Sa'd bin Mu'ad. We have many other Sa'ds. We talked about Sa'd bin Mu'ad. The 36, 37 years old Sahabi, very young. Leader when he was, sister, do you know when he was leader to his people? When he was 18. 18 already leader. Do you know what does it mean to be leader at that age? It means you are exceptional. For people to accept you to be the leader at 18. So by the time he was 30, when the Prophet ﷺ came to Medina, he had so much experience in running the affairs. Wisdom, you see, mix with wise, you become wise. You mix with uh, hey. Look at me, hey. Do you know hey? Hey. H E Y. If you mix with hay, do you know what will happen to you? Uh, cows think you are hay, they may eat you. It's, you know, you are where you put yourself. You are where you put yourself. Put yourself with ulama, you're going to look like alim. Put yourself with good people, you're going to be good. Put yourself with jokes, you're going to look like a joke. So we are responsible of about where to go, what to do, who to mix with. Mix with Oran Saleh, like my sisters here in this list of students, Alhamdulillah, even virtually, even virtually, let alone physically. Wait when you meet Sister Nazaria, Sister Sastina, Sister Zurina, Sister Farah, Sister Fatma, Sister Hamida, Sister Farina, when you meet, how are you, this, mashallah, like we are in the Institute of Quran and Sunnah Studies. When you meet, when you start socializing again, very important. So mix with those who are better than you. Better than you in what? In ilm, in akhlaq, in closeness to Allah. You know someone is closer to Allah than you? Be his or her friend. Stop mixing with people who, just people who have money. You know that I realize most people who have money don't have friends. Did you realize that? Because they think everybody is uh, trying to be friend because of money. That's why they shock. If you give them a gift, if you give a gift to a rich person, he or she, they're going to be shocked. You know what I mean? They, 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 they feel like, because they use, they always give. So <laughs> they think everybody is like, like, like expecting something from them. Why do you, know? you don't even care about their money. Actually, you know, I'm, I'm sorry to tell you this, sisters, don't be, eh? don't be among these people. Some people, all they have, all they have in life is money. Faham what I said? All what they have, they have nothing but money. Poor people. So these are the real poor people. People who, all they have is material. They don't have friends, they don't have love, they don't, they, 
they don't have somebody called friend. Let's just hang up with a friend. You know? Some others know they have everything except money. They have friends, they have health, they have good uh, marriage, they have good wife, good husband, good children, good family, brothers and sisters who love them. Faham. I look like Gandalf the Grey today, or how? Gandalf. Okay. I see you later, alligator. Enough, enough ilmu today. I hope the story of Saad bin Mu'ad will never be forgotten. May Allah be pleased with him. And you know one best way, sisters, to, to inshallah keep this knowledge, share it, share it, please. Share the story today with your loved ones. Anyway, even one person. Your spouse, your daughter, your son, your Sit with someone today after this and just, just tell them what you learned in, in two, three minutes, whatever you could uh, remember. Very nice. You know, like grandmas, like uh, Hajja Fatma and Hajja Zurina, tell story today to your grandkids. Justina to one of your daughters. Nazaria to your son and daughter. Sister Hamida to your husband and Chuchu or whoever. My, my Japanese Chuchu friend. Sister Farah. Inshallah, she, inshallah. Ah, may Allah bless you all. Okay. Inshallah. I love you Amen. all for Allah's sake. Take care. And Sister Farina send salam to all of you, inshallah. Allahumma <laughs> faqihna fi al-deen wa alimna al-ta'wil. ربنا افتح بيننا وبين قومنا بالحق وانت خير الفاتحين اللهم اشفع الا الشافي لا شفاء الا شفاءك شفاء لا يغادر سقما السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته وعليكم